let me introduce you to WX Python. WX Python is a GUI toolkit for the Python programming language. GUI toolkit is also another name for widget toolkit or widget library or UX library. GUI stands for graphical user interface. And a typical example of a graphical user interface is this browser you are looking at where we have static text images boxes text boxes buttons and so on another typical example on the windows is the calculator provided by the windows installation where you have the title bar the menu bar the text area the buttons and so on So these are examples of our GUI, Graphical User Interface. If you access WS Python on the Wikipedia's page, by the way, Wikipedia is celebrating its 15th birthday. Congratulations to Wikipedia. On this page, we learn that WS Python is a wrapper for the cross-platform WS widget, which is written in C++ for the Python programming language. And it was initially developed by Robin and Harry. So it is important to know that WS widget, which is a GUI toolkit for the C++, is the mother of WS Python for the Python programming language. Let's learn more about GUI toolkit or widget toolkit. On this Wikipedia page, on widget toolkit which is also known as widget library or gui toolkit or ux library is a library or collection of libraries containing a set of graphical control elements called widget used to construct the graphical user interface of programs and a typical example is what i've shown you so if you intend to use if you intend to develop something of this nature then of course you know that you need a widget toolkit or gui toolkit to do that and there are so many options available if you scroll down on this page you'll see the list of widget toolkit or list of gui toolkits you can use in different languages if you go to under the high level language section you see that we have for C++ we have widget as an option and if you go down to Python you have WS Python as an option so this WS Python is actually an implementation of WS widget in Python programming language so let's learn more about WS widget if you go to this page on Wikipedia about WS widget you will see that WS widget was formerly known as WX Windows and it is a widget toolkit or a GUI toolkit for creating graphical user interface. If you go to the list of widget toolkits, you see that we have the high level widget toolkit table which consists of so many toolkits based on different programming languages. And the winner here is clearly C++, just as you can see under the programming language field. Virtually majority of the toolkits are, they are written in C++. Then few are written in Java, C, and then Object C. So our main focus is this uh, WS widget, which is a cross-platform GUI toolkit that supports windows mac and uh, linux if you go down to the comparison table you see that we have different toolkits compared to others and then uh, we have binding for those toolkits so virtually all the toolkits have binding for python if you look closely in the in the bindings field of this table on this table 
So the major ones, in my opinion, are five of them, depending on the number of binding they have. The first is the FLTK, which has close to six or seven different uh, bindings for different programming languages, including Python. If you could scroll down, the next is the JTK, which also has the Python binding, PyJTK, or in recent time it is called Py Object. If you scroll down, you also have the Qt toolkit, which has about three different Python bindings, including PyQt, PySide, and then Python Qt. Then we also have the TK toolkit, which has the Python binding as a TK inter. Then we have the WS widget toolkit, which has its Python binding as WS Python. And this is our focus in this video series. So if you go to the next field, which says tools, WS Python, WS widget has the binding of WS Python and it has a tool called WS Form Builder. So this combination is actually the focus in this uh, video series. WS Python and then WS Form Builder, which is a tool. So if you combine, if you extract these five major toolkits and present them on a single table, as I've done here. <clears throat> you will see that the major toolkits have Python binding in them. So these are original toolkits written in C++ and C programming languages. Then they now have, they are now extended into Python using the Python binding. So for TK, we have TK enter for the Python binding. For JTK, we have PyGo, PyG object for the JTK. Then the QT bind uh, toolkit has the PyQT or PySite. Then the FLTK has the PyFLTK binding. Then the WS widget toolkit has the WX Python binding. So this is our focus in this series is actually the WS widget with the Python binding, WS Python, and then the tool for the GUI generation, which is the WS form builder. So WS Python has recently been upgraded to support Python version 3, which is called WS Phoenix. And on this page, you can compare the old version of WS Python, which is the classic, and then the Phoenix version. So here are a list of function and classes modification for both WS Classic and then WX Phoenix. Now that we have seen what WS Python is, let's create our first WS Python application. If you go back to this page, you will see that we have a minimum code required to create a WS Python program. So the first line is to import WX library. Then we create an application object from the WX library. Then we now create a frame object from the WX library. Then we show the frame and then we call the main loop, main loop method on the application we created. So let's open a text editor and then type in this code here to see what our application will look like. So I've created a text file which I named GUI001.py and I saved it in my project folder. So the first line is to import WX library. This is just a normal import statement to import a library into your Python file. Then the next is to create an application object which is given by this syntax wx app 
app is a capital letter. If you open Google and search for WX application, WX app, you will see the documentation API for both the classic and the Phoenix version. And then if you go through it, you will see that WX app is a required class when creating WX Python application. If you go through it, you see that it has some requirements. That is some arguments that need to be supplied. But most of them are not necessary. We are going to keep it simple at this stage. This is the documentation API for Phoenix version. It is pretty similar to the classic version. I will recommend you to go through it to learn more about most of these classes we are going to use. So let's go back to our code. So here we have the application object. This is simply the we created. This creates the application object. So we need to assign this application object to a variable so that we can use it later. Traditionally, it is usually assigned to app variable. But you can use whatever name you wish to use here. So after creating the application object, then we need to create the frame. The frame is simply the container that holds other controls, such as the text area, the menu, the buttons, the combo box, the choice box, and so many other controls you can think of. So this container that holds all of these widgets or controls is called the frame in WX. In other words, it's, it is called window. So to create the frame, we use this syntax wx.frame in capital letter and then you close open and close parenthesis so if you google if you open google and search for wx frame wx python frame and access the documentation api for both the fionis version and the classic version you see that we have the frame the frame can take in a number of arguments as follow which include the parent the id the title the position the size the default style the styles the names and so on. the same thing is applicable to the classic version if you go through the documentation these are the number of arguments that the frame can take So let's go back to our code. So the frame can take number of arguments, but we are going to keep it simple by setting the parent to none. Just in case if you are curious, I'm going to paste in the code or the format for creating the WX frame argument. So this creates the window or the frame object. So we need to assign it to a variable. Here I'm going to call my variable name frame, but you can call it whatever name you want to call it. And the syntax, the syntax for creating the frame argument is as follows. We need to assign the parent. Here the parent is set to none. And then the ID, title, and other arguments are not included so that we will keep our application as simple as possible at this stage. So after creating the frame, we need to show the frame. So you call the application object for the frame and show it. So on the application object, you call the show method. Show is in capital, the S is in capital. You call the show method to show the application. So at this stage, we have created an application object for WX and we have created the window or the frame and then we have shown the frame. So if I run my application, as you can see, it will show the frame and kill the frame immediately. So we need another syntax that will 
should that we hold the frame on the continuous loop that will show the frame continuously which is done by the main loop app, main loop method so on this application we created on app object we created above or whatever name you use here you call the main loop method main loop method the m is in capital and then the l is also in capital letter so you call the main loop method on the app application you created above to show the frame continuously so now if i run the program you see that my frame is shown continuously until i click on the cancel button to cancel it to, to kill it so this is the minimum required code for wx application so at this stage it means when the frame is created and shown it will remain shown on the computer interface until when you kill it when you click when you close it that's when another program can run below so for example i can decide to say print done just below the main loop and then if i run the program my wx my frame will continue to show and it will not print this statement until when i kill it and if you notice down below you see that the statement will be printed by the time i click so this is the essence of uh, the main loop application so, I can remove this. so this is just the basic wx python program so if you want to go on and add in some element or some controls such as the button the text static text static images and so on so you can you do that just right here before you show the frame so this is the portion where you add where you add in controls you add controls or what is called widgets so we are going to see how to add controls in another video but at this stage i would like to tell you that you can also be more creative to create your application in a more opp way that is object oriented programming where you are going to use classes to create the same empty frame or blank frame that this code is creating so let's see that in a moment i have just created an empty py file which i named gui 002.py in my project folder so i'm going to use this file to write another version of wspython python application but this time around in a more object oriented programming so in order to do that of course we need to import our ws library then we need to create a class so this class you can can be called anything so here i'm going to call it just my my frame then it's going to inherit from the wx frame in capital letter after which you need to define the initialization method as follow define double underscore init double underscore then open and close bracket then in the bracket you need to type in self and semicolon then at this point we need to inherit wx frame init method so to do that you have usually have two options in doing that is either you do it explicitly or you do it implicitly the two ways to inherit the init property of the frame is this and using the super method so whichever one you used is the same the only difference is that super will inherit for multiple classes why this explicitly inherit from just the frame class so after creating the class then of course you need to show the frame and then call the mail loop method on the app just the way we did in this uh, 
in the previous file. So usually we would like our program, our file to run only if it is called by its name. If it is imported into another file, we, will, we wouldn't like our program, our file to run. So we use the traditional if statement. So if the name of the file is supposed to mean, then we would like to create our WX app, app application just the way we did it in the previous file and then we create the frame we create the frame object but in this case instead of creating the frame object as follow the way we did in the previous file our frame here is going to be the name of the class we created earlier. We created above. So it's going to be my frame. And then the class, the parent is going to be mom in this case. So you set the class to mom. Then we show the frame. So you call the show method on the frame. Show. Then you call the main loop main loop on our application so application dot main loop method so if everything went correctly if i run the application we should see our window oops we have a little error here and the error said type error in it takes exactly one argument to given okay this is because we have specified that the parent is not here and we are also repeating it here so you need to remove one so let's remove this and leave it blank so if i now run the application we should see our window so this is our window this is our frame created using the opp style that's object oriented style so if you choose to use the super method of inheriting the frame, the init method of the super class, you can use this. So let me enable it and then let me comment out this line. So if you run it, but in this case, we need to say our main frame should have the parent of none. So if I now run it, Oops, I'm getting another error. Okay, I've already specified it here, so I don't need to have it here. So if I run it now, save and run, I should have my window using any of the two methods. So another format of writing the class could look something like this. Where you are going to ex explicitly call all the argument and keyword argument but you either use the super method or you use the single frame init inheritance method to inherit the init method of the super class so if i comment out this class and then i leave this with every other settings and I run the program, I should see my frame created just like before. So also, if I comment on this line, and then I enabled the super method, and I run the application. Oops, I'm getting an error here. Require an argument parent, the parent position. So here, I need to specify that the parent is known. So if I run, I should see my frame just like before. So here, I've shown you two classes two different classes used to create ws python frame you can use any one that is you are more comfortable with or you can use whichever one you have discovered from the documentation or any other material you are consulting so in the next video we are going to take a look at how to add bunch of controls how to add how to add more controls 
and then uh, assign or bind events to those controls. So remember that events controls are also called widgets. So I hope you enjoy watching this.